Hey, hey, happy Tuesday. <laughs> I know you're blessed and refreshed. I'm back with another one today. I am live. Hello, everyone who is here already. Today, we are on day two. New week, new topic. This week, God is taking us on a mission. He wants to remind us that we need to prepare our soul. We need to prepare our soul right here in this life, in this earthly body, so that we can, when we do die, we don't have to die twice. We can actually live forever. So who doesn't want to live forever? I don't know. But uh, last week we talked about preparing our children for death, just something that is going to happen something that's inevitable but it was also brought to my attention that we need to be prepared for death as well because just as anyone else it can come knocking on our door but are we ready are we ready to live unconditionally with christ and um you know god showed me that i have some things that i need to work on so i figured that it would be perfect to uh to encourage you as I encourage myself. So with that being said, yesterday we talked about love, kindness, and forgiveness. And these are just some of the things, there's there's many that are fruits of the spirit. So this information, I did um, what I've done here. I've done a lot of reading lately. And I thank God for that because he's really opened up my heart and opened up my mind to different types of conversations. So, um, like I said before, Encouraging Talks has taken a turn um, for the better, for even better, for our souls, less, needless to say. Not only just motivating ourselves and our children, but we got to get our lives right so we can spend forever with Christ. So, with that, this encouragement is coming from Galatians. And in Galatians, um, I encourage you to read chapter 5, verses 16 through 26, okay? I encourage you on your own time, I encourage you to read the whole chapter. But right here is where you're going to find where they're talking about the fruits of the Spirit, meaning um, that we cannot live our sinful ways any longer, that we have to really fully turn our lives over to Christ if we want to live forever, literally. So um, as you read there, the most important part of this that sticks out to me that is going to go hand to hand with our week is Galatians 5 uh, verses 22 through 26. And I'm looking at the New Living Translation. Quickly it reads, but the Holy Spirit produces this kind of fruit in our lives. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. There is no law against these things, but are those who belong to Christ Jesus have nailed the passions and desires of their sinful nature to his cross and crucified them there. Since we're living by the Spirit, let us follow the Spirit's leading in every part of our lives, and let us not become conceited or provoke one another or be jealous of one another. So as always, this word is blessed by God, and it's just telling us right there some examples of the fruits of the Spirit. Um, there is no law against these things, meaning um, these things are holy. These things are good. These things are of God. And ultimately, we want to sacrifice the life that we knew for the new life. We want to become new so that we can live forever. So. Um, with that, yesterday, I hope that you were um, able to join me. Like I said, the love, the kindness, the forgiveness, and um, those will be up for replay uh, if you're interested to go backwards. But I'm going to go ahead before I jump into today's title of Long Suffering and Temperance. Again, Fruits of the Spirit to live by. And honestly, I had no idea what these words meant until God brought me to them to actually um, whew, experience it and to really dig in and 
and understand what it means. So with that, I appreciate seven people being in the building so much. I appreciate each and every one of you. And as always, I say, don't hear me, hear God, because at this point, I'm just a willing vessel. And um, I just want you to be encouraged by God, through God's word, not from me. So, um, hey, Mr. Terry, good morning. Thank you so much for coming in. You got all the broadcast there for me. I appreciate that. All right, all right. Yes, hey, Steve, good morning. Thank God for another day, amen. I know that's right. Hey, Mika, good morning. Good to see you, Unique. Hey, hey, good morning. Um, Frugal Mama, hey, good morning. We got uh, Sweet Reed, hey, good morning. Thank y'all for coming in. I'm not going to take much of your time, but I'm also going to let God uh, lead me through. Hey, Anne-Marie, good morning. Getting ready and listening. Okay, perfect. Thank you so much. All of you, thank you. So, temperance. Temperance is a word that means self-control. And the word temperance is used a lot in the King James Version, if you read that a lot. And it just means that um, as many times as we... Um, well, actually, let me let me go back. Temperance is used as uh, a lot referring to alcohol in the King James Version, but it can be used for anything. For example, um, caffeine consumption, self-control. Gluttony, self-control. It's funny because my my first lady was preaching on Sunday and she said that word and it it brought it back to me again. And I was like, wow, God's trying to tell me something. But anywho, (laughs) um, and even thoughts, certain thoughts that go through our mind. We got to have self-control over a lot of different things besides just alcohol. And with us having that self-control, with us knowing that um, this area is unsafe, I'm not going to go over here and try to um, be with this crowd because I know that uh, my spirit does not agree. You know, my scent, my my flesh might normally used to go hang out with this crowd or do this or that, but I'm I've become new, right? I have a new body through Christ, and um, I've been born again, so I don't want to go back to my old way. So that's just some of the self control um, that that we're going to talk about here. So. With that, I have three scriptures because I'm finding that the more I read, the more that my deliverance is coming through God's word. And for us to really know how to live this life, for us to know what is good, what is bad, what is sin and what is not, it's all going to be in the word of God. So this, again, is going to encourage you to get the Bible for yourself, pull out your notebook, write down these verses, because I pray that um, God will meet you where you are and that you'll go in the Bible and read these for yourselves. Read the whole chapter, read the chapters around them to get a better understanding of what God is trying to tell us. But right here, and I'm looking at Titus 2 and 12. Yesterday I was putting the verses right here as a timestamp, not only for myself, but for those coming back from the replay. So Titus 2 and 12, it reads, and we are instructed to turn from godless living and sinful pleasures. We should live in this evil world with wisdom, righteousness, and devotion to God. This word is already blessed by God. And um, again, that's just uh, the perfect example of temperance. We are instructed. Meaning, this is not something that, well, let me just say, this is not something that should be chosen. We should be doing this anyway, because God instructed us to. And as many times, (laughs) if you really read the Bible, as many times as um, different people in the Bible were instructed to do this or that, and they didn't do it, and they automatically were caused to die, right? That just makes me think about 
yesterday where we talked about forgiveness. Like, how much does God really forgive us? If he instructed us to do these certain things, if he instructed us to have self-control, control ourselves, control our mouths and things, and we don't do that so many times, and he keeps forgiving us and forgiving us, why can't we do that for those who continue to try to come up against us? Hmm. So we're instructed to turn from godless living and sinful pleasures. Like we have temperance and we know better. We know that that this is not good for us. And we should lead, it says that we should live in this evil world with wisdom, righteousness, and devotion to God. Simple. It's it's very simple. It's actually easier um, said than done, obviously. Because especially when we're used to live in a certain way. But if we want to, again, live forever. If we want to live forever, these are things that we are instructed to do. There is no if, ands, or buts about it. There is no, I'm going to be righteous today, but I'm not going to be righteous tomorrow because it's my birthday. Like, no, we can't do that. All right, so then... With that, my next one is taking me to Second Peter 1. Second Peter 1, 6 through 7. All right. Oh, I typed it, but I didn't send it. Second Peter 1, 6 through 7. It reads, hold on. I'm sorry. I don't think I got that right. Hold on. Okay. Yeah, I don't know. Look, I had all this right here in front of me and it just like disappeared. God brought me to it. I am going to get through it no matter what is trying to keep me away from it. (laughs) All right. That's actually going to start with five because six is kind of in the middle of a sentence. So I think it would be best. To start with five. And it reads, for this very reason, make every effort to add your faith, goodness, and to goodness, knowledge, and to knowledge, self-control, and to self-control, perseverance, and to perseverance, godliness, and to godliness, mutual affection, and to mutual affection, love. So, Make every effort to add to your faith. So that's another fruit of the spirit, faithfulness. Make every effort, God said, to add to your faith, add that goodness, add that knowledge, add that self-control, add that perseverance, add that godliness. All these things are fruits of the spirit. And they all bring you closer to Christ. So. Good morning, Carmela. Thanks for coming in. Hey, Andrea, good morning. Good to see you. Good to see you. Let me go ahead and, I mean, that was, um, that was self-explanatory in itself for this very reason. Again, I encourage you to go back, read the whole chapter so you understand why we are here. But it says, for this very reason, make every effort. So first we were instructed. Now we know we have the self-control to make every effort, right? Because we don't just have faith and that's it. We don't just pray and that's it. We have to add onto that, add more and more of God, more of God. We need more of God, right? To build us up. That's that perseverance. 
Amen. Thank you, Jesus, for that. So with that, um, as I'm going through, let me say, I'm not teaching. You know, I'm just talking about my experiences because every day is um, is a learning experience. Every day is a chance for us to turn our lives around. And that just means that we're imperfect. Nobody came here, um, you know, perfect. So just know that as I'm trying to encourage you, I'm encouraging myself as well. Yeah, thank you for putting that there, Mr. Terry. Second Peter chapter one, verses five through seven. Yes, 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 yes. Self-control, again, here's the next one. First Corinthians nine and 27. It reads, I discipline my body like an athlete, training it to do what it should. Otherwise, I fear that after preaching to others, I myself, I myself might be disqualified. Amen. This word again is blessed by God. And what does that mean? It means that huh, disciplining your body like an athlete. Oh, those athletes, they they serious about that job, right? They're serious about their business. We should be the same way. We should be serious about the job that we have to do for Christ. Right. We should be serious about our father's work. Meaning I'm going to discipline my body like an athlete, meaning temperance. So not only alcohol, but drugs, caffeine, gluttony, even my thoughts. Did you know that? God, he already knows what, what we're doing, right? Because he made us. He made our lives the way they are. He knows the future and we don't. He knows our heart, right? Do we know that if we say, oh, I'm going to stop drinking today, and then we turn around and we have a drink anyway, we know that God can see that. We know that then we we have failed God. That just shows that we don't fear him. And what does that what does that lead us? That leads us to, um, you know, if we never do turn from our sinful ways, it, it will lead us to death, eventually, one way or another. I don't know how, but that's God's way. And I don't know about you, but I don't, I can't die knowing that I I have lived, I have worked so hard this past year, and have not taken it seriously enough to give my soul right to go on to heaven. I, like, I don't know. <laughs> Amen. We have to be listeners and doers of the word. I see that. Yes, absolutely. And it's hard out here. It's hard because as you do, as you do come into Christ, you want everybody else to come into Christ as well because it's great here. You want everybody else to live by the spirit as well. But you also got to live by the spirit yourself and realize that everybody is not like you. And that they have their own deliverance with Christ, but they have to want it. So just with you being here, it shows me that you want it. And just, just the fact that you're connected to me, it gives me the power, it, God's power. Uh, it gives me the drive to keep going. Because I'm hoping that somebody out there listening here or on the replay is just like I was. Coming and trying to encourage somebody about things that I had never even been through. About something relating to a video that I saw. I just summarized it and came and talked to you guys about it. Must be true. But now, over the last uh, few months or so, God has really had me in, in some type of isolation to the point where I can say that I have been given a new mind and a new heart. So at this point, we're going to go on and talk about long suffering. And long suffering <laughs> is something that I really, really, really struggle with. But I tell you, God is good, and he will deliver us. Let's let him. Let him in. 
So while you're here, again, don't don't hear me, hear God. I'm just being transparent. I'm just being a vessel. Long suffering. So when we talk about that in the Bible, it means to have self restraint, which is pretty much the same as self control. Um, but more so when we're stirred to anger, when we are provoked, we're able to, if we have long suffering, we're able to endure hardships and trials and tribulations and all those things that happen in our life, but we're not so angry. We're not so bitter. Amen. Thank you, God, for deliverance, because that one is a big one. That we all that we all might suffer with, and we might realize it, we might not. Long suffering is a fruit of the spirit, whether we know it or not. Um, it basically means the same thing: self control, self restraint. But let's just say, uh, for instance, my neighbor. You know, she knows how much I, I hate dogs, right? But she always lets her dog off the leash. And I feel like every time I'm going outside to go somewhere, here comes this dog running up to me. And I just want to dart. I want to run away, right? Well, lately, <laughs> I used to just run away and I used to be so mad. I used to scream. I used to cuss. And everything up under the sun telling this lady about her and her dog. <laughs> but let me tell you now. It's almost like that dog knows that God is all over me. Because when I come outside, that dog don't even come near me. But that's just something small. That's just a small scenario compared to what we might be actually going through. Who might actually be coming up against us. Or the enemy making us feel like we really need that drink. Or we really need that whatever. And then once we get it, now we're all out of spirit. We're angry. We're, we're mean. And we're doing all these horrible things to others around us or even to ourselves. Hmm. When you live by the fruits of the spirit, it shows. It definitely shows. And people, um, people or animals or <laughs> and whatever in this case are, they're going to see it. So the best that you could do in this case, in your long suffering, whatever that might be, is steadfast, steadfast and hold fast, knowing that God is making you go through this for a reason. God has made that dog run up to me and pretty much chase me away for almost four years now for a reason for me to get to a point where that ain't going to bother me no more. That dog is not going to bother me. He's going to be there, and I still got to go do on, do what I got to do. <laughs> the same thing with those trials and tribulations. Those people at work, they don't really like me, but I still got to show up. I still got to do the job. I still got to push through. So let's go ahead and look at the scripture real quick. Second um, Peter 3 and 9. Let me get it. Second Peter. Let me type that in for you and myself. Three and nine. I pray that you got your pens and pencils. Uh, pens and pencils. Anybody use pencils anymore? Uh, notebooks or whatever that is. Write down these scriptures and follow along with me if you can. Study it on your own so that maybe even after this broadcast is done, leave me a comment and let me know what you think. All right. Good morning, Lori. Good to see you. Thanks for coming in. Hope I didn't miss nobody. All right. Second Peter 3 and 9 reads, The Lord isn't really being slow about his promise, as some people think. No, he is being patient for your sake. He does not in want anyone to be destroyed, but he wants everyone to repent. Amen. So, I mean, this is self-explanatory, right? He is not being slow about his promise. As some people think, uh, I mean, I thought that way several times, several times until, oh, wow, today's Tuesday. Yeah, I got I got a perfect testimony Tuesday video for you. So I encourage you to stay tuned for that so you can really, 
really <laughs> understand this part from me even more. But anyway, um, he's not slow about his promise. We are just not in the right space to receive. He's being patient for your sake. Meaning you are too hot headed. You are too, uh, you know, you're not even tempered. You're not, you don't have that self-control that we think that we might have. We still lose it somewhere sometimes. And that's why we're, we have not received what we've been praying for. We're simply not in a position to be able to handle what we've been praying for. Amen. And it goes on, it goes on to say that God does not want anyone to be destroyed. He wants everyone to repent. So, hmm, that just goes to show you that back then, these things like um, being quick to anger and and you know being bitter and things like this, that just goes to show you that these things led straight to death. You were just being destroyed at this point back in the day, before Jesus, right before the forgiveness of sin and all this. So let's take that into consideration that we don't want to be destroyed because of our own anger and our own bitterness. We need to understand that trials and tribulations happen and that we need to be ready to stand fast. Give it up to God instead of being ready to, um, you know, trying to Handle it our own way, because it is never the right way. All right, let's go over to Ephesians 4 and 12. Ephesians 4 and 12, or 4 and 2. Did I say 12? Oh, I'm sorry. Okay, four and two. Here we go. <laughs> yeah, he asked us to absolutely. It reads: Always be humble and gentle. Be patient with each other, making allowance for each other's faults because of your love. Okay, and this word again is already blessed. Always be humble and gentle, which is completely the opposite of <laughs> the bitterness and the anger overcoming. Those things, the self-restraint, the self-control, they all go together, right? Be humble and gentle. We're going to talk about being humble a little bit tomorrow. And that's also known as meekness. Meekness is another fruit of the spirit. Amen. Be patient with each other, meaning I'm not going to be quick to anger or I'm not going to be bitter at someone because they don't know something or because they said something about me or because they feel or thinking about me some type of way. I'm going to be patient with them. Make an allowance for each other's faults because of your love. Yeah. We have to. Although we don't want to, Although we don't completely understand sometimes, right? But it's just the way that we're supposed to live. It's the fruit of the spirit. If we want to live forever, if we want to guarantee our souls a spot in heaven. I tell you, the love, what is it? Love covers a multitude of sin. It really does. So with that, let's look at Romans 5, 3 through 4, and then I'll let you go. You grow daily in handling good situations, trials, and misunderstandings. Yep, absolutely. Romans 5, 3 through 4. We can rejoice, too, when we run into problems and trials, for we know that they help us develop endurance 
and endurance develop strength of character and character strengthens our confident hope of salvation. Amen. It's already blessed. It's already blessed. It's always blessed. It's very self-explanatory right here. Like, huh. we have to rejoice when we run into problems. Hmm. We know that they help us develop endurance, right? It makes us stronger. We're not going through this for no reason. God is building us up for something. But are you strong enough to stand the test of time? To stand this test that he's putting you through? It builds character. <laughs> sure does. Now, now um, I did say that today's Testimony Tuesday is going to be pre-recorded again. It's been super busy here. It's really hard for me to go live. But it's going to be a good one. And I encourage you to turn on your notification bell so you'll be able to catch that video later today. Pre-recorded live, I should say. Just going to have a conversation. Um, I, I have been coming with talking about the book of Mark. There's a lot of parables in there. A lot of things that I've been going through myself that I'm able to relate to. And um, yeah, I, I always include a testimony as well. There's been some, the devil's busy, y'all. The devil's busy. When you really um, turn your life over to Christ and really try to do the right thing, live by the way, fruit of the spirit, the devil, he's going to come. He's going to pounce as hard as he can <laughs> all over everything. So, you know, we all deal with that. And I'm definitely not complaining, uh, but I'm just realizing to, to just sit back and trust God even more than I have ever done before. I mean, I, I sit here and... I could just start reading like I'm, I've been reading through Genesis and I'm almost done. This is the second time that I've read through Genesis. And now I have a completely different view of it than I have before. But I could just sit here for hours just reading the Bible. I mean, it's just so it's warming. It's very warming. Hey, Rx Nails. Good morning. Did I say good morning? Good morning. <laughs> Oop. Frugal Mama's live. <laughs> so, yeah, I'm not going to hold you much longer. Um, stay tuned for Testimony Tuesday. I I had the biggest trial yesterday. It's not it's not the biggest trial in my life. But, woo-wee, it was something else. I'm going to tell you all about it. So join me um, later today. Also, don't forget that um, I'm finishing up the book of Second Corinthians. I've been reading that, um, reading the Bible for you to listen to while you're getting ready or while you're doing things because um, God sees it sufficient that we get his word into us. We need it. We need it in order to navigate this life, in order to change our mindsets, in order to change our life. We need it. So if you're too busy, if you are... You know, not the type of person that likes to sit and read the Bible, at least listen to it. And I'm reading it at this moment, <laughs> going wherever God takes me. So with that being said, thank you for joining me um, today. I pray that you be that you be blessed. I pray that you're encouraged by it. And. I'm going to go on over to Frugal Mama and see what she has going on today. So, have a good day, and I will see you tomorrow. That's it. That's all. As always, remember, thank you so much, Lori. That means a lot. Thank you. Be true to yourself, because if you can't be true to yourself, if you can't be true to nobody else. Bye-bye.